Hello and welcome again to our website. Today, Sunday the 28th of March, is in fact what often people call Palm Sunday. Traditionally it's the time when, when people remember that Jesus Christ took a journey into the city of Jerusalem. He came to be presented as king, but he was rejected as king. And what follows is what often people refer to as the Easter story, his rejection his trial, his death, and his resurrection. And as Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem, there was fulfilled the words of one of the Old Testament prophets, a man called Zechariah. He wrote these words, Behold, your king comes unto you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey. Quite incredible words. Your king comes unto you, he is just and having salvation. I want to just think for a few moments with you of these three remarkable statements. I want to think about the king and his arrival. Says Zechariah, he's coming unto you. He had come from somewhere, literally arrived on that day in Jerusalem. But where did his journey begin? Was it just Bethlehem, the place of his birth? Was it the end of a life's mission? Is that all that is in view in that statement? I want to tell you today, he had come from more than just Bethlehem. He is the Lord from heaven. This was a mission that had taken him not from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, but from heaven itself to where you and I are. He came here. And that journey was going to take him ultimately to the cross and, and the shame, the suffering, the death that he was to endure. It was a journey that he had planned, a journey that he had purposed. He came for a reason, and he came from heaven itself. Isn't it incredible just to think that Jesus Christ didn't just draw sort of near. He didn't come close. He came exactly where we are. He came where we are. He put his feet where our feet stand. Incredible. That's the wonder of the love, the kindness, the grace of the Lord Jesus. He came here. And so the wonder of it, the king and his arrival. But I want to tell you about the king and his character. What is Jesus Christ like? Well, says the Bible, he was just and he was lowly. We think of that term to be just. It means this, that he had a profound, personal righteousness. What do I mean by that? He was the man that was absolutely right. And in his very inner being, there was no shades of wrong. There was nothing like that about him. No doubt about him. You and I, when we look at ourselves, there is so much that is wrong. So many things that we entertain in our hearts and in our minds, which we know is wrong, that was never true of him. So many things that we say, and we have to apologize for them, never true of him. And so many things that we do, that we regret the moment we've done them, it was never true of him. Absolutely perfect through and through. Incredible, isn't it? Someone with a personal righteousness. He was without sin, the failing that marks you and me. But more than that, not only was that what he was personally, Think about what he did personally. He did what was right. He lived a life that was right. Says the Bible, he went about doing good. That was the character of the life of the Lord Jesus. He revealed precisely what God is like because he was and is God manifest in human form. Incredible. He is just. There's no one like him. No one like him. But more than that, he was lowly. Ponder that for a moment. He was God eternal. The one that, that had all the glory of God was resident in him. All that God is was true of him. He was God, is God. And yet he didn't come in grandeur. He didn't come with great ceremony. There was no glory associated with it. His birth was lowly. His life was lowly. And when it came to his death, it was a death of shame and of degradation. 
he was lowly. Think about this for a moment. He came like that for you. He gave up heaven's glory for you. He lived a life like that for you in order that he might become and be your saviour, the king and his character. But what about the king and his mission? He is just, says the Bible, and having salvation. Why did he come? Why take that journey to Jerusalem? Why ultimately go to the cross? What was the point? What was the purpose? Says the Bible in one word, salvation. To be rescued, delivered, to be put into a place of safety, and as a result have security. That's what it means to be saved. To be rescued and delivered from the wrong that we have done and the consequences that it brings. And to bring us as individuals to a place of security, a place of safety, and ultimately therefore a place of happiness, a place of peace, a place of joy, salvation. And when I think about that grand word, Behind it sits the wonder of God's forgiveness and God's love and mercy shown to us. That's why Jesus Christ came, in order that you and I might have salvation. You know, today it makes us realise and face up to something. Face up to what we are, first of all, as sinners who need salvation. He came to be the saviour because we needed a saviour. He came to bring salvation because we needed salvation. He came because of what you and I are as sinners, those who fail God's standards, deserving his judgment. We need to face up to what we are. We need to face up too to what we can't do. He came to be the saviour to bring salvation because we couldn't do it. If we could have worked out our own salvation, then there would have been no point of him coming. If we could have somehow got ourselves right with God and, and, and got ourselves a place in heaven without him, then there would have been no point of his coming. He came because we couldn't do it. He came because you couldn't do it. He came to do, to, to do the things that we could not achieve, to bring to God that sacrifice that enables God to justly forgive those who will come to him through the Lord Jesus. He came to do what we couldn't do. I want us to realise today that when he came to be saviour, the saviour, that meant Jerusalem and the cross, his death, him giving up his life willingly, voluntarily, because he loved you. And not only giving that life up as a sacrifice that can enable God to justly offer salvation, forgiveness to people like you and me. But I want to tell you that this sequence of events, Palm Sunday as we sometimes call it, his arrival to Jerusalem, and then the cross, Good Friday as often people call it, his death had to be followed with the last part of the story. He rose again from the dead. And because of that, he can be your saviour today. I want to ask him, as we think about this moment that Jesus Christ entered into Jerusalem on that, that first Palm Sunday, if we can call it that, I want to ask you this question. Do you have the salvation that he brought? Are you saved? Listen to the words of the Bible again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Simply trusting him for what you cannot do. And trusting him because of what you are, a sinner in need of salvation. And to find that salvation exclusively, uniquely in him. And to realise that in trusting the Lord Jesus, you gain forgiveness, peace, security, the certainty of heaven. He is a great saviour and we commend him again to you.